Mr. Bridges, welcome to the Opie and Anthony show, sir. How are you, sir? Yeah, please. Holy mackerel. We're on the air. It's a pleasure to see you. All right. Good morning. Wow. We are, we're on if you want. Wow, you're actually here. Yes. Here I am. I'm used to seeing you on the big screen. <laughs> Um, it's 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 rare we get uh, a lot of the A-listers to do morning radio. Oh, don't say that. No, 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 but they don't, don't like say doing it. We get a lot of A-listers, Mr. Bridges. Good, good. Do you like morning radio or do you not like it? Oh, I'm doing pretty good right this second. You know, a little sleepy. I'm looking forward to my coffee. It should be here soon. Any second. Keep the speed. Right. You played one of my favorite roles. Uh, you can't hear? Just down, just a skosh. Um, yeah, you got, you got your... I imagine it's a little. Hold on. Uh, we're probably blowing out uh, Mr. Bridges' oh, ears right now. Is it right here? Right yeah, here. You, you got it? Good, yeah. yeah, cool. Thank you. I almost told him left to turn it down, right to turn it up, but I'm assuming he knows how to do that. <laughs> My mother is in love with you before we get into the interview. Oh, in love with yeah, you. Cool, with, man. Yeah. She, she's an older broad, but she... Yeah, that's all right. I, I like older broads. Yeah. yeah. She was in love with Jeff Bridges. We talk about Mr. Bridges all the time. Jeff, Jeff's a very handsome guy. Uh, he played, you know, you were in King Kong. Let's be honest. I'm not a woman, but in, back in those days, I, <laughs> I would have hooked up with you if it was possible. As you stood on the, where, where did they shoot that? And that was one of the, the scene that stuck with me. Oh, man. Where well, you're standing on the outside of the tower... And uh, Jessica Lang and the, and the ape oh, on the other. Uh, oh, yeah. And that was a horrifying moment to me. You know, it was a wild thing during that when we were shooting that. This little guy comes up to me and he says, uh, do you, uh, how do you like my temple? I say, your temple? He says, yes, this is my temple. I said, what are you talking about? He says, oh, yes, I tightroped across and Philippe Petit. Oh, no oh. kidding. And he lived right across the street from that, and he would look up at that thing every day. And so, you know, this was his, you know, his we were we're obsessed with uh, Philippe Petit. Oh, what he did that day, man, we talk that about it all amazing. the time. And then he was sentenced to what uh, to perform for free in yeah. the park for a year or something. Right. And that was that was the year we were making Kong, and that was it was wild. He taught me how to juggle, which I, I think the thing about that day. Like, now they figure all that stuff out and they test everything. He just he snuck in. And then he, he's, you saw the documentary, right? Oh, yeah. Where he shot the arrow oh, to get the line across, and then that, that Can was... Can you imagine that? And he didn't know if it was all going to be, you know, secure no. enough. And, and, he, and he, was, he was planning that for years, and right. all his uh, friends, you know, were, he were laughing at it and say, yeah, we're with you, and they all fell out, except for his best friend who went over to the other side. It was just him and his... I mean, oh, God. What a story. And then he laid down on the wire between oh, the towers. Man. And that's what freaks me and yeah. Jimmy out. He said oh. he saw planes flying above him. Not just walking, but he did a 45-minute show. So he's been here and talked to you guys. Yeah, yeah. a few years back oh, we man. talked to him. And then we just had Nick uh, Walenda on uh, a couple weeks ago mm. who did the Grand Canyon thing. Oh, wow. There's so. something about the towers, though. There's something about the way he had to rig that and, and sneak in that makes that so impressive. Oh, God, amazing. Did it annoy you a little bit, though, that you guys are doing this movie and he had to come over and just go, hey. I walked between those yeah, two buildings. Yeah, did it bug you a little bit that he had to come and get a little, you know, kind of. Why, why would that bug me? I, was he, I don't know, because if he's kind of coming over and getting, you know, like, no, hey. You know, actually, you know what, what his connection was? He used to perform with Jessica Lang. Yeah, in France. Oh. She was kind of a street performer. So he knew her? Yeah. He oh, knew, okay. Yeah. There you go. Did she remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're buds, yeah. Did you like the remake? I mean, it's always weird if you, oh. I mean, even though King, your version was a remake, of course. Oh, yeah, but. but our version was kind of a joke. I mean, <laughs> you, know, I mean, you know, you had this guy, you know, uh, Rick Baker in the suit, you know, and then they would cut to this, you know, 90 foot tall, you know, statue of an ape. And you know, it was ridiculous. No, I thought the new thing was, the new one was, you know, kind of spectacular. The ape was Incredible. You know what freaked me out about, what I didn't like about the 77 version? It had nothing to do with you or the acting. It was that in the movie poster, because I was like nine at the time, in the movie poster, oh, they yeah. show Kong straddling both oh, right. buildings holding planes. And you're like, he's fucking oh, huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But in yeah. the movie, he didn't do that. No, no. He had to jump from one building to the other. I was very, I felt very gypped. I, I, I remember as a kid, you know, pretending to be sick so I could stay home and watch the original. I used to love that thing. The original, the Kong. original Kong. Oh yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was great. What what made you do, get into acting? I guess Bo got into it first, and of course oh, your father. My, my dad. I mean, he uh, 
he wanted all of his kids to get into showbiz. He just loved it. It was kind of unusual for an actor, you know, but he uh, he really dug it, you know, wanted us all to go into it. It was great out of town. That's not just that, the opposite, not, right? Not that I need to tell you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you hear a lot from, uh, you know, guys like yourself that, oh, I don't want my kids to go into this business. It's too yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but he dug it, man. Oh, he, he said, you got to do it. I, I wanted, you know, for a long time, I wanted to, uh, I said, well, I don't know, Dad, you know, I'm thinking music, you know, maybe. And he says, you know, Jeff, come on. He says, you know, you could, you're going to be able to play all sorts of things. If you're an actor, you know, you'll get to, you know, do the musician thing, whatever you like. You know, you use all of it. So I'm glad I, I followed his instruction. What well, instrument do you play? Yeah. Guitar and piano. You're supposed to be very good. I've heard you're very good. Oh, I'm, you know, not real great musician, but I love playing music. I'm going out in the... Uh, the road here in a couple of days with my band. You know the band? Yeah, yeah. My daughter, Jessie's going to open for me. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That sounds great. cool. Yeah. So uh, what's the name of your band and, and what kind of music you play? The Abiders. Nice. Little country, little rock. And do you yeah, sing? Stuff, sing. Okay. Writes, tunes, you know. That's cool. A lot of actors are doing. Like, who, Kevin Bacon's got a, the band with his brother. Yeah, I mean, we, he was in this movie that's coming out, R.I.P.D., and we jammed when we were, you know, making that movie. That was a lot of fun. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, a lot of actors, you know. Juliet uh, Lewis is like, she's she's got like a lot of music. Oh, uh, she yeah, loves yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. She's she's wonderful. And her dad, you know, Jeff Lewis, we, we worked together before. I don't know him. Oh, yeah. he's uh, he, He's been in all the Clint Eastwood movies. You'd recognize him if you saw him. Oh, really? I'm going to look that up. I'm going to Google that. That was your first, by the way, Oscar nomination was for the Eastwood movie you did. Uh, I, I know I'm a Thunder, uh, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. A picture show was before that. Oh, was that your second? The, yeah, but but uh, Jeff Lewis was in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. But who yeah. did he play? I don't remember the movie. It's been many years. You know, there were you know there was uh, G- uh, Arthur uh, uh, George Kennedy, and it was G- he was George Kennedy's sidekick. Do you find doing films now that are the scripts? I, I find like a lot of the films are not like they're just doing reboots and remakes of what they already did. I know, man. And I don't yeah. know what that is. Yeah, well, it's uh, you know it's the show biz, it's the business aspect of show biz, you know, and they I guess the financiers fi- uh, want, want a sure bet or something, but uh, they don't want to take think, as many chances. Yeah, I think the fresh stuff that's what people want to see. They want to see something different. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I tell you one of my favorite things you ever did? You play a great psychopath. Was uh, was the remake of the Vanity. Oh, yeah, but the original was much better, man. Come on. You see the original? I did the French one, yeah. Oh, see, because my guy, you know, my character, he got away with it. <laughs> yeah. And it was bizarre. The same director directed both of them, and he wanted, I guess he wanted the... You, you want know, to change American, it up? He wanted the American version, but it softened it, man, I thought. Do you think he wanted it, or the studio no, told him? He, no, he, he wanted it that way. The studio probably wanted it that way, too, but I think he was into it. He, you know. Wasn't that uh, it was one of Sandra Bullock's early movies? Yeah, it might have been her first, I think. I don't know. Where you, she plays uh, Keeper Sutherland. All of a sudden, they're at a rest stop, and she disappears. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he becomes obsessed with just finding Diane, and he wants to find his girlfriend because she's gone. Right. And then it turns oh, out yeah. that you, oh. fucking Barney. Oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> but the original was a masterpiece. I thought that's what got me on board on that movie. Now we got to see the original. Oh, God. It's How did the original end? The original ends when this guy's family who buries, you know, all these people alive. He's having a picnic with his family. <laughs> yeah, you know. At his cabin, past the ketchup, you know, and you know, underneath that table, under the table, there are all these people he buried alive. Oh, and, wow. You know, life goes on, you know. Well, they let you know because the thing was, he didn't know. I don't remember in the French version, he didn't know how Diane died. He became obsessed with knowing what happened to her. So he, Barney approaches him and says, I will, you'll experience everything she experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads us to a question. Why do you think in America we need that happy ending or we need everything tied up all nice by the end of a movie? Oh, that's how we want life to be. It, right? But only in America, because when you do yeah, see the foreign yeah. films, they'll, they, they will go in those I other know. directions. Go, every once in a while, uh, an American movie will go dark. Uh, and we I, love I, it. I, I dug it when, uh, what was that movie it did about with, uh, what was it? Uh, shit, I can't think of the name of it. You know. The, uh, the bomb, the scare, you know, scare, the, I don't know, I get blown up. I can't think. I'll come, it'll come to me in a second. It'll <laughs> early in the morning, man. That was, a very, that was a very dark ending of this particular movie. I remember the studio, we got a note from the studio. We want you to shoot a positive ending. And we went, oh, ah. shit. And the director made a very bold choice. He said, let's shoot it 
Arlington Road is the name of the movie. Oh, just a little movie called Arlington Road. <laughs> and he says, "Let's make. We're going to. We've got to right. do it, but we're going to make it terrible. We're going to just do a terrible job." And that, was, <laughs> that, that was bold because you know we could have we could have lost. They could have said thank you and put that on there, but thank God they didn't. That's great. That's hilarious. That, but that's typical studio thinking, I guess. It's just, let's oh, just get one of the man. case the focus groups don't like. Uh, yeah, even in our dumb world, we get that. Like, oh, that was really good, but let's shoot a safety yeah. and oh, do it this way. Oh, and you're like, oh, oh that's the one they're going to use. Yeah, yeah. Do you think focus groups have hurt movies and stuff? I mean, they make them more financially probably successful, but do you think they've hurt, like, what, what films could become? Uh, maybe. I, you know, I, I, I like... Uh, the director to have the you know the vision one guy just let him do his deal you know that's that's my you know that's what i would vote for what motivates you to take a role because this you've turned down a few gems um which uh, ones because that's i hear rumors that i've turned down oh, all kinds of things that's not ah uh, hooper and jaws <laughs> no <Is> that true? <laughs> no right here no, no. turn down the no. role of hooper in jaws that's not, i don't know who, who hooper is who's hooper is oh hooper was hooper was uh, the shark <laughs> No, it was uh, Matt Hooper was uh, Richard Dreyfuss's part. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, that's one our that's our, our, our Sal wrong. got wrong. Was that Sal? Unless I wa unless I wasn't, I don't even know about it. You know, that's maybe your agent did. Yeah. Well, do you know one uh, of one that you did turn down? No, yeah, not well, really. I, uh, I can't think of anything I turned down that I wish I hadn't. You know? Right, right. But what did you turn down that would be considered a big movie? <sighs> Because you guys I all have even, to have I, one. I, I can't even Did you turn down the anything. lead in Raiders of the Lost Ark? No, negative. <laughs> I've heard that one. No, okay. No, 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 wait, it's no, on the no, list? Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I would yeah. never make this up. Oh, that's hilarious. No, okay. No, those no, were two. Do you have any more? Or is that it for him? Yeah. Um, were you really in True Grit? Let's just make sure <laughs> that I have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have the right stuff. Well, on I'd, the... like, I'd like to, uh, what, well, on that one, you know, True Grit, working with the brothers. You know, they're they're the master of filmmakers, you know. So anything they want me to do, I'm on board. What motivates you to take a role? Obviously, you have to like it, but is, are there other? Do you do you care about who you're working with, or do you care oh, about? Oh yeah, this? yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, the kind of movie I like to see, you know, that's kind of the where the filmmakers are kind of ahead of you, something fresh, you know, that's you know a little different. And what do you do? They say you you meditate before you go on set, or is that just another lie that's been thrown into the yeah, prep? It's a semi lie. I meditate it times to do you know but you don't do it before you walk on set every time not every time okay but did we just have no accurate information <laughs> your, your name is spelled j-e-f-f -F. <laughs> three f's three f's it's fucking amazing i, I love meditation i just you got into it? it you said yeah i just got into it i don't know what the hell i'm doing uh, pretty, mr bridges that's, that's the that's your right but i like on, it man. isn't it cool it's it's cool oh yeah it, it, it settles my brain mm -hmm. and i, I want to get into it even deeper and yeah. try to figure it all out what just he, ten minutes a day, just by yeah, yourself, oh man. trying to get that brain silent. I can't make myself do it. My mind just won't stop. Well, just that's okay. nonsense. That's okay. That's what the mind does. You, know, you just let it do your thing and just say thanks and go back to your. <laughs> yes, yes, right, yes. right. Yeah. Yes. Man. What do you do if you itch? I always have an itch. Like if I'm trying to relax and not do anything, yeah. something itches. Well, that means you're not really meditating because all that goes away if you do it properly. <laughs> I know. I've never done it properly in my life because <laughs> I do it. Uh, I do it um, on the Upper West Side as really loud outside the window and you hear the trucks and next thing you know you go whoa wait i didn't hear the trucks for the last 10 minutes then you know you're meditating i wrote a book recently you know called uh, the dude and the zen master nice and the zen master is this cat named uh, bernie glassman right who is um, a homeboy here and he's from, you know from new york and uh, we had a great time making that and he's a uh, he's a wonderful guy yeah he's uh what's it about it's about, uh, you know, get, about sitting, but uh, oh, it, Bernie came to me and he said, uh, Jeff, you realize in Buddhist circles, the dude is considered the Zen master. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about, man? He says, oh, yeah. He says, you know, Lebowski is full of modern day koans. Koans are these kind of Zen, you know, questions that you have to, uh, you know, answer experience. Right. right. Sort of. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, look at it. The Koan brothers, you know, for one thing. And then he mentions all these uh, koans, like, you know, the, you know, like probably one of the most famous koans. Is, What's the sound of one hand clapping? You know, that kind of thing. You know, it makes your money. And I said, well, give me an example. He said, well, you know, shut the fuck up, Donnie. There's a koan for you, you know. And, and he, he ex kind of explained that. Or the dude abides or whatever. He says, let's write a book about... Uh, about uh, the koans that are in 
mm-hmm. Lebowski. I thought that's what the book is about. Nice. I'm going to have to pick that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like uh, we, ha- we have to plug what the movie is because they're telling us we have like eight minutes left. Uh, R.I.P.D. It opens R-I-P-D. Friday. I can talk 19th. to Jeff Bridges all morning. So now, you're, yeah, I, all I want to do is ask you questions about movies. You're fucking all, all, I'm fearless. I loved Fearless. Ooh, one of the best. Big Lebowski, obviously. One, oh, that's a good just, one. Fearless or Big Lebowski? Both. Both. Oh, the Big Lebowski. I think Fearless. Big Lebowski got a tremendous amount of love. But fearless, I thought, was very underrated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In hindsight. I thought so. Jagged that, Edge. Going way back. I mean, you know, it's crazy. Look, look at how many movies he's done. Yeah, it's a very impressive resume going back to, I think, the early 70s. Now, you've had a bomb or two, right? Is that a bad, guess, yeah, yeah. Is that a bad feeling when you know the movie just didn't work? Sometimes, yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, so many things have to come together to make it, you know, a success. Uh, uh, you got to count on so many people doing so many their things, parts. You know. Yeah, I, I remember I made a movie that I really enjoyed um, called The Amateurs. Great cast. <laughs> uh, it was all about the, you know a little town making a porn movie. It was we had a great time nice. making it, and it, you know some uh, the guy who distributed you know was a, a crook and it never it just never saw the light of day at all. You know, but you got to you know kind of. Let it go. So is that movie not out there anywhere? It's probably on DVD or something. It's really funny. Ted Danson is just great. Uh, wow. wow. That's so weird. Yeah. Well, they just shelf the time. They just put the movie on the shelf. For, oh, yeah. For yeah. years. Well, yeah. The guy went bankrupt. I mean, you know. And, and no one could go and say, screw it. Let's try to figure out how to get this no, out there. No, no. Huh. Yeah, it drove the poor writer and director, uh, who was who was wonderful, Mike Traeger, kind of, you know, gave him a stroke. And he, <laughs> oh. you know, can you imagine working right. on something for a couple of years and then just... It's your you baby. Know, oh, and you love... Yeah, it's your baby. And you get Jeff Bridges and Ted Danson to do it. Right. Like, oh, man. Like, that, that's a miracle in itself. Oh, it was and I got crazy. these guys, and you're telling me that no one's going to see this? this? scummy oh, distributor wow. fucks everything up for you. Oh, that's awful. we got to talk about the new movie, yes, obviously. R- yeah. R.I.P.D., um, I, I, I want to make sure I, I get it right. You are a, uh, a, a slain uh, police officer who uh, joins a team of undead police officers working for the Rest in Peace Department. Uh, no, close. No cigar. Man. No. <laughs> Once again, the fucking idiot. Yes. By no. the way, I no. am just reading. Jeff, I just oh, want you to know you're on a very it. professional show here. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I can it it might not that. sound, no, that. No, I sense sound that. that way. Or seem yeah, that way, I should say. Here's, here's, okay. here's what's going on. RAPD, first of all, it stands for Rest in Peace Department. Okay, yeah, I have that. Although some people are calling it ripped. Which yeah, it works all right. Right, right, right. But there, anyway, I play a uh, a marshal from the 1800s who is uh, no longer with us. I'm uh, dead. I belong to the uh, Rest in Peace Department, and uh, it's the Rest in Peace Department is made up of all of these uh, wonderful uh, peace officers uh, who are now uh, after dead people who want to be alive still and actually exist and are walking amongst us, and uh, we are, you know, taking them uh, back where they belong. And I'm partnered with a wonderful actor, uh, Ryan Reynolds, who okay. is a modern-day cop who's also dead, and he wants to get back uh, amongst the living, and we uh, are hunting deados. Okay, so wait, if Ryan Reynolds was recently killed... Maybe this is accurate then. Maybe he's the That's recently right. slain there cop. You go. There you go. It sort of made sense. A recently slain cop joins a team That's of undead right. police yeah. officers, but yeah. he's so not the right. recently okay. slain cop. He's okay. from the 1800s, Mr. Uh, Jeff Bridges. Yes. Gotcha. Do you like playing a guy from back then more, or do you prefer playing a modern guy more, or do you not care? I do not care. You know, it's fun cowboy guys. I mean, I love the, you know, westerns. You know, they're wonderful. What's amazing about you, though, is, like, no matter who you play, whether it's whether it's a cowboy or whether it's, a, you know, a Barney or whatever, you always bring some... You never seem to play the... You always play uh, an interesting guy doing that as opposed to some predictable version of that character, if that makes any sense. Thank you. Thank There's you. always some weirdness to it, and, uh, like, you know, uh, really, uh, no one can play what you do the way you, you do it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And I know that that was really a, a kind of a shitty off-kilter yeah. compliment. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. No, but I, I mean that. <laughs> when, when, how do you... I'm always, I always ask great actors, how do you make something yours when you see it? Uh, well, you know, when you're preparing for the role, what I do is... Um, Look inside myself, you know, think of different aspects of myself that, um, you know, kind of work for the character, and I might magnify those, you know, uh, and 
got you know aspects of myself that don't look kind of kicked to the side and um and uh, so kind of like that and then i look you know i find when i'm when I'm working, uh, it's probably like with you guys. You know, you, aren't you always looking for things to put on the show? Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. You just so you just I'm just open and I'm looking at people. I say, oh, see how he's twirling that. I think I'll use that and right, right. You know, you know, just uh, my mind's always, you know, always working, always working. Smart. Yeah. You incorporate something that you see or experience yeah, during the day. Yeah, yeah. Are you? Are you God, a, I hope my pen twirling ends up in a Jeff Bridges <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. That was because of you me. Know, I know it. <laughs> or Can you do it just for me? Exactly. <laughs> His next role. He'll just ask completely wrong things to a guest, right. and that will be the contribution from this program. Right. Do you uh, are you the same? Uh, like when when the camera cuts, do you, do you live in the role for a little while, or are you immediately back to being Jeff? Uh, it's funny. I remember doing a an interview at home one day, and the guy asked me that same question, and I said, you know, I'm really not the kind of actor. Uh, who you know takes his work home, and I you know don't have people call me by my character's name and that sort of thing. And I was doing a, the movie Jagged Edge, where I was playing you know a psychopath basically. And uh, the the guy says, "Oh, really? You don't do that?" And 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 my wife happened to be in the room, and she went. <laughs> I say, why do you? Why did you? Why did you do that, sir? She says, "You don't think you do. You don't think right. you bring it home, but you do." So I think subconsciously the character lingers, you know. But I'm not aware of it. I don't try to do it on purpose. You're not afraid of lo like if you if you pick up something for for a movie and you become this guy, you're not afraid of losing that. Like on the two or three days you have off or whatever, you're not afraid it's going to go away. No, it's kind of a nice re a rest, you know. Take a rest from it. It seems to pop back. It does. Yeah. Did you know Marlon Brando? No, no. Really? I'm trying. Always trying to talk to people. Uh, who know. Yeah, I would admire him. Though. We had James right. Lipton in, and he discussed Brando. I just love hearing about how fucking nuts Marlon Brando uh, was. I can never get sick of. My my brother worked with him. In what? Actually, it uh, it turned out that uh, he was replaced by James Mason, but he re rehearsed with Brando for a long time. And Bo, uh, he told me a story. He said uh, he was working with Marlon, and Marlon came up to me and he said. Uh, Bo, uh, would you mind if I put uh, my lines on your forehead? <laughs> Bo says, well, sure, Marlon, but why? I'm just curious. He says, well, I want to have eye contact. I want to appear that I'm looking at, my, at you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I'd heard stories about that, and I yeah, never knew if it was true. Wild. Well, did he do it? Yes, he yeah, did. Mar with Marlon Brand, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever, Marlon, you know. But I would, I would... I would think he's just saying that to see if you would go, no, sure. No, no he really meant so it. so many weird ways of acting. Another thing, I heard that he, uh, maybe he, maybe Brando invented this, but I work with other actors who use this, and it's kind of fascinating. You know what an earwig is? No. Got, no it's oh, is it the earpiece? Yeah, it's a little earpiece that you right. put it in that you can't see, you know. And this uh, particular actor, and I hear Brando did this all the time, didn't memorize his lines at all. And he had an assistant in another room who would uh, give him his lines. Wow. So this actor that I was working with, uh, you know, you'd be talking to him, and uh, he would have this kind of blank stare, and, and then he would there would be a pause, and then he would bah, 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 he'd say his line. And it was a kind of a wonderful effect, something that I wanted to try. But how did well, it, didn't it look like you, you weren't in the moment if it required a faster, like if you have to yeah. cock your head to hear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, for, fortunately, the guy's character's name was some idiot. <laughs> <laughs> they could edit that out, too. But wouldn't it be wild? Is it an actor we know? Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to. I, I figured you would. Yeah. I'm not going to push it, but is it uh, a pretty famous I mean, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't it be great if, uh, you know, a whole play like that or everybody had earwigs, there was no lines, and there were people in the other room just giving him, you know, so I, I think it would be an interesting uh, effect. That sure. would be amazing, uh, yeah. yeah. If, if, if you hope that the piece work, because there's nothing worse yeah, than like, oh, watch, yeah. oh, watch. Oh, exactly. Would they actually, in final cut, would they take uh, the dialogue and put it closer together? Would they cut out that pause time, or would they no, leave it? They just left Depending, it in this I case. Guess. I mean, the guy's name some idiot. You know, they just leave it, you know, that glaze, it worked. Yeah, I I heard Brando did that because he just didn't feel like doing the work anymore. But then I, I heard on The Godfather, if you see like screen like caps of that, there's like lines written all over the kitchen. Oh like, yeah, yeah, a lot of ways to do it, man. A lot of ways to do. Do it. you find more? Are you more comfortable knowing everything before you go in, or do you kind of like to learn as you go? Mm, I like to know my stuff, you know. But um, each one is different. I remember. Uh, 
a couple of them. Like I did a movie with Tommy Lee Jones, and one of my favorite actors, uh, Blown Away, was. Mm. And we're um, getting towards the you know the climax of the scene. We all knew from the beginning that that scene wasn't working. We said, well, we'll fix it. You know, and it was the day, and they couldn't fix it, man. You know. What are we gonna do? Well, put it on the damn cards, man. They put it on, and I've got to, you know, do this scene with one of my favorite actors with reading cards off the back, you know, from behind his head, you know, stuff like that. What do you mean they the, the fixes that they put for the scene? Not the fixes, the whole, you know, I had like a monologue, you know, the whole mm -hmm. big thing, yeah. You know, or uh, with uh, with Iron Man, you know, you'd think with a two hundred million dollar movie they'd have a script, you know, but uh, often. Uh, Downey and Favreau and I would be in our trailer working on uh, the scene for that day, trying to write it, while they're all tapping their foot waiting for us to come to work. And we're, you know, saying, okay, you play my part, I'll play your part. Let's figure it out, you know, Favreau. Oh, I, I know a good writer. Let me call this writer. He might have some ideas. No way. Yes, yes, man. Oh, you would so, never think on a big budget film. Not that happen. while. So that freaked me out. You know, of course. Like I was saying, my... My uh, M.O. is, you know, learning my lines, you know, and then so I don't have to think about it. But I made a, uh, so it drove me crazy at first, but then I made a little inner adjustment. I just said, oh, Jeff, you're making a $200 million student film. <laughs> just relax, have fun. You know, and look at the result. It came out great. great. You know, so. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to do it, man. The process is so interesting, yeah. isn't it? It's uh, sometimes it's fucking because I've done it and it's really hard to do well, and uh, I, I'm amazed by guys Wait. who do it so well. I have a follow-up question. So the blown away scene, did it end up working in the end? <sighs> Not, not really, I mean, huh? I, I mean, what, you know, when I watch movies that I'm in, there is a, a home movie aspect to it, you know, because I remember. You know, all, everything that went down. I'm not just following the story. So that, you know, it's stuck in my craw. I gotcha. Admit, you know. is, there, is there a monologue you look back on or a moment you look back on and you go like that? If, you know, if I, if I that's something I would want everyone to remember me by. Like one, one moment or one monologue that you felt like I did that really well. <laughs> uh, one that comes to mind, I don't know if it was a monologue, but it just popped into my head was uh, the dude uh, getting into uh, the car with the big Lebowski, you know, trying to backpedal, you know, and getting the toe and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I dug that scene quite a bit. Yeah, that movie's yeah. a well, classic. Well, those guys, those writers, man. I mean, they were the great. Coen Brothers, the yeah. lot, God. They made a lot of great films. And they make it look so easy, you know. Right. Oh. Yeah. I think he's got to go. Thanks. Well, yeah, the last thing I have to say is uh, we, we interviewed your brother once on the phone. The incident is oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. It drives me nuts that everybody doesn't know that oh, movie. Oh, yeah, that's a great movie. Was that yeah. his first? Marty Sheen, yeah. 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 And, well, uh, I don't know if it was his first, but that was you know, early, yeah. And Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon, right. And yeah. uh, Brock Peters. It was such a great oh, movie. yeah. About a, just a problem on a train. It was Martin Sheen's first movie. I, I really don't know the movie. Oh, it's now black I gotta and white. see that, too. Tony Masante. It was really great, and that's yeah. all I wanted to do was talk to Bo Bridges about it. So oh, whenever there's a Bridges man. around, yeah. I have yeah. to mention it. Sure. All right, R.I.P. PD, uh, obviously with Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges, opens this Friday, uh, July 19th. And you, Oh, you are on Twitter. The Jeff Bridges, spelled with a J, J-E-F-F -F Bridges, on Twitter. And uh, do, you, do you read all your at mentions? No, man. I don't, even, <laughs> no, I don't even know what that is, my at mentions. I, I, you know, I have someone handle all the Facebook nice. and Twitter stuff. I, what's this vining? Do you know about that? So what is that? Is what, that, how is that the next thing? I don't, I don't. Uh, it's, uh, people are enjoying it. What is it? Six, seven, six seconds? second videos. Yeah. Oh my god! But, and then they can jack with it and make, do weird things with it. Yeah, something. and and Instagram is like fifteen second videos. I like you the Instagram. You can get a lot done in fifteen yeah, seconds. No, it's all happening too fast for me, man. I don't dig that. It, no, you don't like the technology. No, I mean, I mean, it's it's too <laughs> overwhelming, isn't it? I mean, if you don't if you don't answer your emails for a couple of days. You know, forget it. You're just swamped. Yeah, I am. Can I don't... you picture life anymore without without computers or email? I can't Not picture really, life no, without it. I'm hooked for it. I kind of dig it and hate it all at the same time. Or leaving your house without your phone. That's like a tragedy now. Yeah, oh. We come from a time where th you just did that. You didn't have a phone. Uh, yeah, and, and everybody can get you anytime. I, I used to know. like being off the grid. Yeah. I still Not do. that I was doing crazy shit. It was just yeah, nice. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, it's just me for a few hours. Yeah. No one could get a hold of me. Do you remember leaving for the airport and you knew you'd call the guy when you got to the hotel? <sighs> right. 
right. there was no way to get a hold of you unless uh. I used a pay phone in the airport. So it would be six, seven hours before you could talk to somebody. And now I'm literally texting until well, the, oh, the yeah. door. No, I don't door. text. Yeah, I don't oh, you do don't? That. My wife texts. And she feels all modern. I, <laughs> she I feels all modern. modern. Yeah, I don't, you know, that's another thing. You've know, you got to keep up. I don't want to keep up. Man. God. <laughs> well, what do you do for fun when you're not acting? I know you got to go, but to do, the music, music, which you're hitting you know, the road with. I like, uh, you know, I do ceramics, uh, you know, really. Photography, too, like I heard. Photography, yeah. Do you take pictures of the other actors? Like That's us? the main thing I do. Oh, know? you do? Yeah. I'll get you guys a, a, a book. I took uh, some shots of RIPD. I'll get you guys a Oh, yeah, I'd love to see yeah, that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. He loves his photography. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're a photographer? No, I mean, you do. You do, oh, but I, no, do, I yeah. take pictures with people, um, and I do them. I do it poorly. No, he's, I don't take very good pictures. Jimmy's thing is he's obsessed with getting pictures with celebrities. If, if oh, I, well, I yeah. like to do it. Yeah. It's an obsession, though. Yeah, and you do, like, this self thing? I have a couple selfies? of times. Yeah, yeah, I got selfies, Sydney yeah. Poitier in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pharmacy. I had to do a, a shitty iPhone selfie. <laughs> But, uh, you know, what you got to do is you got to do when you're getting, you know, getting fucking uh, so Cialis in Beverly Hills. So if you say no to a picture after this interview, it'll, it'll make my day. No, Certainly, because he'll be so bummed out. <laughs> he will be bummed out. I, would just be, I wouldn't be angry. I would just be sad. I, yeah. I was on a flight with uh, Joe Pesci recently, and he wouldn't take the picture because because of everything you're talking about. I just wanted a picture with Joe Pesci. He goes, oh, man, I, I just don't look good right now. I flew all night. It was like uh, one of those red uh, eyes. Uh, uh, and, yeah. I, you know, and he just would not take the picture. I'm like, look. I, I don't even need to tweet it. I just want a picture with you. Maybe he could have, take, he could have taken a picture with his hand. Yeah. He could just put his hand in the frame. <laughs> yeah, you just put your hand out. Yeah. That is Joe Pesci. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah. The next oh, one that yeah. says no. Yeah. That one bummed me out. Yeah. You know, I'm not obsessed like as obsessed like Jimmy, but that one was a bummer. I was like, God. I don't want to creep was... out my new Hollywood best friend. Yeah, we feel like we're friends with you now. Good man, That's you better come back. It, uh, yeah, you should come back with the band and play a song. Yeah, we would yeah, love that. Yeah, okay, good deal. Yeah, you're gonna come in uh, perform go, in New York. Yeah, I, well, yeah maybe, you know, next time we're gonna go to Texas and Nashville, and then we're you know working our way up the coast. Yeah, we'll get up here. All right. Well, the great Jeff Bridges, uh, I, I love you. I think you're you're just you're fantastic. So. Thank you, man. Thank you. And the movie is R.I.P.D. and it opens Friday, so yes. let's all go see that. All right. All right, Jeff Bridges, everyone. See you guys. You'll be there to show on Serious X.